Explore the boundless realms of spiritual growth, ignite the flames of education, and curate a life brimming with purpose and meaning. You uncover ancient wisdom for the modern seeker as we delve into the depths of self-discovery, harness the power of knowledge, and craft a lifestyle that resonates with the very essence of who we are. Join us as we navigate the profound, the practical, and the positively inspirational, all in one enlightening space. Your story, our essence. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Soul Story, where we are all about educating about the Bible, motivating those who want to embark on that spiritual journey to do so, and those who are already in their spiritual journeys to, co to continue moving. Today, I have a brother of mine, a powerful man of God in the studio. His name is Brother Steve. I hope I pronounced that the right way. Yes, yes. Man of God, how are you? Uh, I am doing well, sir. I'm doing well by God's grace. And uh, I will say that it's a pleasure to be here. I would like to appreciate and thank you for the invitation. Thank you, man. May you kindly of just introduce yourself to our viewers? Okay. Uh, I would like to greet the viewers. Uh, basically, my name is Trino Longsan Makatini. I'm a child of God, born again. I love Christ so much. And um, basically, that's who I am, a minister of the gospel of Christ. Amen. Amen. So, man of God, uh, the topic of today is what is meant by tax? Okay, I love this topic because it is a very sensitive topic for many people, many Christians. Mm -hmm. And basically, tongues, we see that the word of God, when Paul speaks about tongues, I love it in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he mm -hmm. speaks about tongues. He says it is a language. He says there are many kinds of languages. And it, so this tells us or shows us that tongues is actually a language. Remember that we have a, a spiritual world and a physical world. Mm -hmm. And in the spiritual world, there are beings there and they communicate to each other. And therefore they have a language that they use to communicate. And that language is what we call tongues or the gift of tongues mm. to us because it is given unto us from a spiritual realm to the physical realm as we are here and given to us by the Holy Spirit. Mm. So it's a language of the Spirit of God. A language of the Spirit of God. So can you just break it down? May you please tell us about the types of tongues that we have? Okay. There are two types of tongues that we have, mm -hmm. and we see this in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, mm -hmm. verse 1. Paul speaks and says that, even though I speak in the tongues of men or in the tongues of angels, but have not love, I am like a teen or a symbol. So this shows us that there are two types of tongues, yeah. and the types, the first one is the tongue of men, and the second one is the tongue of angels, of which sometimes we call it an unknown tongue. And the reason why we call it, or the Bible calls it an unknown tongue, it is because it is unknown to this world. Mm -hmm. It is unknown to the mind. Mm -hmm. Because it's a tongue of the spirit. Mm -hmm. So, basically the first tongue, which is the tongue, tongue of, of men. Yes. Paul speaks about this tongue. He says this, he tells us that, he firstly said when he speak about the tongue of the spirit or the unknown tongue, he says that the mind does not understand mm -hmm. this kind of tongue. Mm -hmm. Now, we need to remember that in the Bible, we see that in the book of Genesis, God frustrated men or brought different languages to confuse men. Mm -hmm. So that's when we get the tongue of men, which is languages, normal languages. And that kind of a tongue or a language, you do not need divine help to know it. Mm -hmm. Even though the Holy Spirit can supernaturally make a person who do not know the language to speak it. However, even an unbeliever can speak the language because it is a language of who? Man. It's not a language of the Spirit. So that tongue, it's a tongue, for example, English is one of the tongue or the languages of men. Yes. And Paul speaks about these languages in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. He says there are many languages of mankind, and each and every one of them, they have a meaning. Mm -hmm. So you see that a tongue of man, it's the tongue of the world. Yeah. 
it's the languages that different people speak. Yes. For an example, say, we see in the book of Acts chapter 2, mm -hmm. that the Bible speaks, it says that after the Holy Spirit came, the Bible says that then the people who were inside the house, they started speaking in different tongues. Now here's a thing that tells us, if it was the tongue of the Spirit, which is the unknown tongue, or the tongue of man, the Bible says that the people who were outside started speaking, asking themselves and saying that, are these people drunk? And others said, you know what, these people are Galileans, yet they are speaking our own home language. Mm. We are hearing them in our own home language. Now remember this thing, the Bible says that it was the day of what? Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Now we understand that the day of Pentecost was all celebrated by the Israelites. And in that celebration, people from different places, different places, different countries, who speak different languages, will come to celebrate in that specific day. Now the people who were in that place were from different places, people who had different languages, home languages or native languages. So these people heard the believers speaking and praying in their own native language. And they were surprised and they asked the question, are these people not Galileans? Mm. Yet we are hearing them in our own language. Mm. So that is the tongue of men. The tongue of men, it can be understood by the mind. And anyone can learn the tongue of men without any divine intervention. Yet again, the Holy Spirit, supernaturally or divinely, can make any person who does not know a language to instantly speak a language. Just for an example, if they say there is a person who needs to hear the gospel, but I do not know their language, the Holy Spirit can divinely so automatically take over me, and I found myself speaking that person's language. Mm. So that is what basically the tongues of men are. Mm. So. There might be people in church, right, who, yes. who have this whole idea, you know, that's all about if you cannot speak in tongues, it means that you, don't, you do not have the anointing mm -hmm. of, of, of the Father, or yes. you, you are not of a certain caliber, right? Yes. So, what would you say to someone who might be watching this at home, yes. who is saying, man of God, I am a believer, I'm very active in my spirit. But people have told me that because I cannot speak in tongues, yes. I do not have the anointing yes. of the Father. What would you say to that particular person? Thank you so much for the question. You know what, Sam? I love the Word of God because it guides us in everything. Mm -hmm. Now, I love the fact that the Bible in the book of First Corinthians chapter 12, when Paul writes about the gift of the Holy Spirit, and I love that the Bible is specific. It says it is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It is not the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So we must remember that what makes a person to be a child of God is that they have the Holy Spirit, not that they have a gift of speaking in tongues. Yeah. Because we get Jesus, he says that anyone, the Bible says that anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ is not of Christ, meaning they are not a child of God. But that again tells us that if they have the Spirit of Christ, and that is the Holy Spirit, they are children of God. And so what gives us identity is the fact that we have the Holy Spirit, not that we have a gift of speaking and praying in tongues. Because so many times, there are even people who come to church and receive the Holy Spirit and everything, and people still backslide, and some of them, they still continue praying in tongues, yet they are left with their gift, yet there's no longer a spirit behind the gift, because the Bible says that God does not take the gift away from us. So that gift does not give you an identity, but the Holy Spirit gives us an identity of who we are. So they must not feel like they're not, you know, Christians, what makes us to be children of God, what makes us to be Christians, is having Christ dwelling in us and following the way of the Spirit. That is what makes us children of God and sons of God. And what Christ did on the cross, not the gift. The gift actually say we receive the gift because we are already children. Amen. Not because we, we, God wants us to make us children. Mm. For an example, say, if a person is Zulu, a child, 
they does not begin to speak Zulu uh, or they do not become Zulu when they begin to speak the language. Yeah. They speak the language because they are. So even with this gift, the gift does not make us who we are. We receive the gift because of who we are. And that is a child of God. Hmm. Yes. So it's not the gift that's, that makes you who you are. Yes. But it is who you are who makes you who you are. Yes. Yes. So men of God, yes. let us talk about who Brother Stino was. <laughs> Before Brother Stino was born again. Because you have to understand that as much as we're educated, Yes, sir. Some people think, you know, Abantu who, who are preachers of the word. Yes, sir. Abantu who believe that Christ is the king. Yes, sir. They, they think some of us are, you know, are like aliens. We, yes, yes. We, 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 We're born like this. Yeah, you know, and for some of us, no, 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 no. It's actually not like that. We, yes. For some time we were of the world. Yes. But you know, the father came yes. and restored us yes. to God's back home. So can you just tell us, who was Brother Stino before Brother Stino was born again? Thank you so much, sir, for the question. Well, you know, whenever I speak with people, I tell them who I was before I came to Christ or before Christ came to me. Mm -hmm. so most of the people do not believe me because I will be honest with you, say and tell you that first of all i used to go to church but i went to church because i was forced hmm. not because i wanted to go to church but simply because my father used to force us to go to church and i and i felt like he was abusing me <laughs> by taking me to church yeah. well when my father passed on during 2012 i was doing grade seven I stopped going to church because even before that I was going because he was forcing me. So I was going, he was the reason why I was going to church. Jesus was not the reason why I was going to church. Mm -hmm. So when he passed on, I stopped completely going to church. I stopped thinking about God. And after that, I went into the things of the world. And from the age of 13 years old, say, when I tell people that I started drinking alcohol, I, started, I went to such an extent of even, I began smoking. Mm. Not just cigarette, even dacha itself. And I was just deep into the things of this, of this world. And I would go sometimes to Sangomas to just to seek for this traditional medicine and things. So that I can feel like I have an identity, like I'm a man. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And that's the kind of person that I was before Christ. And I was that born again. Even at home, they knew that I was very stubborn before I came to Christ. I didn't care whether you were old or young. If I want to say something, I'll say it, regardless of how you'll feel. I was stubborn at home, yet outside I was acting as if I'm a, you, you know, a sheep. Hmm. That was the kind of person that I was before Christ found me. But I will tell you, on the year 2015, Sam, I was still doing all of these things. I have not been going to church by that time for about three years now. Not even thinking about God at all. I was not that kind of people maybe were debating and saying that there's no God. No, because God was never in my mind, not even a second. He never just he came into my mind. So what happened the other day, just like usual, I wake up and I bath and something comes to me and say, just take a walk. And Sunday, I still remember, like it was yesterday, I was wearing a Kaiser Chiefs t-shirt. <laughs> He's a Kaiser Chiefs supporter. I used to be. <laughs> okay, used to be. Yes. <laughs> and, a, and a gray that I used to wear at school. Mm. But it was now old. So I just woke up and, and that thing said to me, after but then take a walk. And I was like, okay, let me take a walk. I took the walk. Now, say, I see a church that has been there all along, mm -hmm. I've been knowing it, but that day, something said to me, the church is next to a mountain, and there are no buildings or houses by that place, there are no shops, there's nothing interesting. But something says to me, take a walk towards the mountain, surprisingly. Mm. I just, okay, let me go. And as I'm next to the church, something says to me, just go to church, 
you know, let me just go to church. I don't know for what reason, but that's what just came to me. Let me just go to church. And I entered. And when I entered to church, I sat down and they were doing all everything. Now, the person who was supposed to preach, now, when he stood up and supposed to preach, he began to speak about other things. Remember, I had never read the Bible before. Mm. The only thing that I knew, knew about the Bible is Adam and Eve. And I knew that because when my father used to force me to go to church, I was part of Sunday school and we sang about Adam and Eve mm. and the snake. That's how I knew Adam and Eve. I had never read the Bible before that. So, the man started speaking about things that are not even about God at all. He started saying things that are out of context. Context. So now, something, I'm sitting down, I never read the Bible. I was not going to church, not even thinking about God. And all of a sudden, something within my belly, I begin to feel like there's fire here. Hmm. And a conversation from within me begins to happen. And I'm asking myself, what is happening with me? And the conversation is, these people have the word of God. Why are they not preaching the word of God? Mm. So now when that conversation comes up, and I'm like, what is happening with me? Yet again, the conversation does not stop. Sir. It continues and says that next week, Sunday, I'm coming back here to preach the word of God. My mind is asking itself, what is happening yeah. with me? Yet again, there's another conversation that is mm. happening. <laughs> and when that happens, I leave church after church. Now it's Monday, Sam, and Monday I go to school, and after school I was doing grade 10. Grade 10, I was 15 years old. So now, after school I came back, that night, Monday, I slept. That's when, from that day, I began having dreams where God was teaching me the Bible. Oh. That's how my wow. journey of faith in Christ began through what was happening, I didn't understand it, but it's mostly began through the dreams. So from then, I started having dreams of God teaching me the Bible. It began to teach me about things. Teach me. I had no one who can tell me about Christ. There was no one, but Christ himself came to me. I never invited Christ to say, Christ, I need you, but he's the one who saw me, just like a lost sheep. Mm. A sheep does not know that they are lost. Yeah. But it's the shepherd to see that this sheep is lost and runs after it. So it's the same thing that Jesus did with me, Sam. I was not interested in Christ, let alone Christ. I was not interested even in anything about God. I was just living a worldly life. But Christ saw me because he had a purpose with my life. And he saved me. And I'm this person today because of him. So that has been my journey. Yes, there have been times where it's been difficult. Because my journey say, I must tell you that at home, I was the first one to say that I'm going to believe in Christ and Christ alone. Everybody else believed in Christ and everything else. And that made people to begin to persecute me from my family. Began to hate me. Simply because I said, I'm now choosing Christ because he had already chosen me. So I'm choosing to side with Christ, with the word of God. So from there, I began to be persecuted. So a lot began to happen. A lot began to happen. And until this far, Christ has carried me. And I've seen God do wonderful things. I've seen God minister to his people through me. I've seen God showing forth his goodness and faithfulness, even though there have been storms. But above all else, Christ has been greater than the storms. Amen. So that is what I have experienced. And that is my gene with Christ. Amen. Uh, let's go back to the topic of tax. Yes. Uh, while you were still speaking, yes, sir. the book of Jeremiah came to mind. Yes, sir. Jeremiah 1, which says, The Lord knew us before he even formed us. Yes, sir. So now that we're still talking about tongues, I just want to translate that into Sisutu and then yes, please sir. translate it into Isprosa <laughs> because I need this kuluma about the tongues. Yes, sir. Because it's true to be a hurry. Jehovah, yeah, now you must move around. That's not. Who to be the pillar of our book? If the Lord were now on our high, and the jaloak aha mushang kwa haya chulo muna. Hurry. Asita ba ya gift. 
itaba ya uru wena, uma, wena, uma na wacho. Man of God, may you please just translate it? into Zoom? Yeah. Well, what it actually means is that Unkulunkulu no much Jehovah was a singer Gabumwa, a swing is a bass alibetu. And Aguko Mailana ne gift, e gift, I sensi, which is seven identity. Kodwa, you don't want to see we a sensa, some girl, a sip, or we gift. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, man of God, I just want us to motivate someone out there. Yes, sir. Someone who has been in a journey. Because I believe that someone who might be experiencing or who have experienced what you have experienced, yes. who is watching this today. What yes, would you say to that particular person who has, you know, encountered things like drinking, encountered things like smoking just to go a day? Yes. Sir. What would you say to that person who is now part of the body of Christ or who is in the process of accepting Jesus as their Lord and Savior? Okay, thank you so much, sir, for that question because there are actually a lot of people who, when they see a, 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 or they look at us, they think that our life is boring. Mm. You know what, sir? When I was still doing these things, I thought I was happy. But until I came to Christ, that's when I discovered that no, I, I was actually not experiencing the true joy. Mm. When I began to come to Christ, I began to experience the true or the reality of joy, I began to experience the definition of joy. Yeah. Because the happiness, I, it was because of what happenings, the things that I used to do. But this joy, it came from within, it comes from the Holy Spirit. Even though situations might be against you, but this joy, you, be, you are able to have joy in the midst of storms, in the midst of situations. So the journey with Christ, I love it because even because say, most of the people run to these things because they are trying to fulfill a certain void. Because they are trying to make themselves to be happy. Because they are going through something. But the truth of the matter is that most of the times why people fill a void. Remember that their spirit knows its creator and the soul knows its creator. Even though it might want to repair it, but it knows that it was created by God. So each and every time a person who doesn't call have God, their souls will have a void that can only be filled by God. Because mankind was not created to live outside of God without God. Amen. So there will always be that void that needs God and only him can fill it. And when God comes in, when God comes in, you never regret. That's why I can boldly say that I do not regret coming to Christ. And I actually wish that I came to Christ even before I began doing all of those things. Because I feel like I wasted time and money and other things. But Christ, in Him I found joy. In Him there is joy. In Him there is life. Actually, He Himself is life, Amen. is peace, is joy. He fills us. He makes us whole. He gives us identity. He gives us purpose. He makes us acceptable because some some of the people do things because they want to be accepted in him we know our wealth and in him we are rest assured that we have identity that he accept us because of what christ did for us on the cross of calvary and jesus christ satisfies every man and there's no sin that cannot be forgiven there is no sin. I sometimes regard myself just like Paul said, uh, I am the worst sinner. Sometimes I say, when I look at my life, I say that Paul, Paul was actually better than me. He was just a murderer. I am the, I was the worst sinner ever. If God could forgive me, then he can forgive anyone. Christ died for everyone. So there must be, but there must not be anyone who can feel like they cannot be forgiven. They cannot come to Christ. They cannot be revived. Even those who have fallen and they want to come back, it's possible. As long as a person is still alive, say, that shows that God is not done with your life. Amen. Amen. So there's a book that I'm reading. Now, now that you, you said what you just said, it, it really just, it brought that back. And I was actually reading this yesterday. Yes, sir. Uh, Francis Chen is, is a pastor and 
he's comparing, you know, he's saying, as people, we tend to take all the good we've done and all the bad we've done, and we try to weigh it. Yes, sir. And he's saying, you have to understand that in the eyes of the Lord, your good is nothing. Yes, sir. And it can never, yes, you know, cover what uh, all the bad things that you've done. Yes. So yes. It, it brought that, Uti, it's time that we stop looking bad. Yes, it's sir. It's time that we stop weighing things. Yes. It's time that we stop comparing. Yes, and sir. just embark on a journey with Christ. Yes, a sir. A journey that will lead you to eternal life. A journey that has, you know, permanent joy. A yes, journey sir. that has peace. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's actually true. That's actually true. Because most of the times we try to come to God because of what I have done, because of what I've said, but that's an error because God saved us, not because of what we have done, but because of what Christ has done. We are forgiven and accepted by God because of what Jesus did on our behalf, yeah. not what we do on our behalf, but what Christ has done on our behalf. So, and even I love the word of God. God says that our righteousness is like rags or filthy rags before him. So we can never attain God's standard. That's why it had to be Christ, God himself, coming down, taking on the form, or form of a human being, the flesh, and dying on the cross because it's only him who can satisfy his own standard. Not even an angel was going to be able but God himself, because even angels were created by God in that manner, and it's him who sustains them. So it's only him who can meet his own standard of holiness and perfection. That's why Christ has to be the one who comes and dies for us. And then there is a substitution. Christ's righteousness is given unto us, and our filthiness is placed upon Christ, is crucified. So all that we need to do, is to believe on what Jesus did for us and accept what he did for us and begin to walk with that sin. So what did you discover that you can actually speak in tongues? Because I've heard you speak in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, to be honest, uh, I started speaking in tongues when, um, it, I believe it was 2018. 2018. Now, um, I had taken a gap year. Now, I, st I had started watching, you know, DSTV and everything. I used to have my small Bible testament. You know those that yeah. they would give you at school? So, yes, that one. And when they are preaching, I'll be having that small Bible, opening it with them. Now, one of these days, a certain preacher by the name of Apostle Jim Aldonado, mm -hmm. he was teaching about tongues. Now, I, was, I opened my Bible, and at the end, as usual, every time so when they said, who wants to accept Christ, I will stand and raise my hands. Even, <laughs> even if now a preacher says, who wants to accept tongues, and I will stand, and that session is over, and I watch another life, and somebody wants to, I will, every time I was like that. So even that day, when they say, who wants to receive tongues, then imagine this man is from Brazil, and he was speaking from Brazil, and it was even a replay. And now, he said that, I raised my hand, just as usual, I locked the door, I was, I was scared, to be honest. I locked that door so that no one would see me <laughs> raising my hands, because I was at home. Now, I slept that day, when I slept, I dreamt of myself praying in tongues, that same night. Now, the following day, I'm praying as usual, praying in English as in Zulu, and I all of a sudden, a language that I don't know, I do not understand comes out of my mouth. And I instantly stopped, actually, when that language came out of my mouth. Mm. I stopped. I said, what am I saying? Yeah. I thought that I was speaking vulgar language. Yeah. I thought that I was insulted. Actually, I actually repented. Mm. Mm. I repented. I said, God, I felt sorry. I said, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for insulting you. I'm sorry for speaking about vulgar language against you. Mm. Now, now, and then after repenting, I felt like now I'm fine, I'm at peace. I went back to prayer. Same time. I, this language came back again. Oh. I repented again. I don't know how to say. Remember that this pastor was preaching about tongues. Mm. But when that experience came, 
I did not, did not even remember even a single verse, and even that sermon. And I repented again and again and again and again. That's how I, I began speaking in tongues. I don't know how God did it, Nessa. But this is what happened. Now, remember that I, I was repenting when I, you know, speaking in tongues. Because I, I did not understand what is this. Even though I raised my hand as I want to receive it. I had forgotten everything. And I was repenting, feeling guilty. That is something wrong. It's something actually demonic. That's what I thought. So now, what began to happen is that God, I, I, this was divine sin. God in me. He began to make my mind or make me to not have a problem with speaking in tongues. Even though I did not have an understanding of them. That question in my mind of saying that, is this demonic or not, is this God or not, did not come anymore. And that happened divinely. I don't know how God did it. But that question never came to my mind again. And I never prayed and said, God, do this. No, because I thought it was demonic. But that question never came to me. I found myself now being, you know, comfortable speaking in tongues. Until the time I met my pastor, who used to be my teacher in primary. Now, how I got to her, it's because at home they thought that I was now speaking, you know, something demonic. Mm -hmm. It was demons. And they wanted them to, they wanted them to check if maybe I have demons. And I too, along the way, I was questioning myself, God, is this for real or is this demon? But God, you know that I love you. You know that I, I don't serve Satan. I serve you, Jesus. Mm. But when I got to my person and explained to her, oh, no, what is happening? She was just like to me, okay. No, she began to open the Bible again for me. No, this is the gift that is from God. Don't be afraid. Actually continue. Imagine, they, I went there or they took me there so that they can check. If maybe, uh, am I not demon possessed? But God, you know, when the Bible says that everything worked together for the good, good of those who love the Lord. Mm. Instead of me getting be discouraged about this gift, I got more encouraged to use it. Because my pastor, when I got to her, she explained to me what was happening to me. And that's when I began to embrace the gift of tongues. And it's a nice gift to say. It's a nice it's gift. A it's a wonderful one that the Holy Spirit has given to us. So that's when I began praying in tongues. And because for them at home to come to a point of where taking, they have to take me to my pastor. I remember that it's kind of like a service at a certain home. And then me, I just it was like, because I'm a preacher, I was a preacher, let me just go there. And I went to that place. And when I got there, I preached. So I had this thing that every time I preach, I would pray after preaching. Yeah. So this person, there was a person who was going to be given into marriage, was from that church that some of my family members are going to. So now when I preached, I said afterwards, let me pray for you. So he <laughs> said, there were a table before us, and I was standing behind the table, and I moved. The table, the two tables, the girl was sitting right here. And I went to her, and I laid my hand, I closed my eyes. I was praying for her. You know, protection of that is she's going to marriage, let the marriage be successful and everything. Now, I closed my eyes and prayed. But after minutes, some, I don't know how many minutes, I heard someone tapping me here. And it's, it was actually the people in the church. They had a cup of water and they were going to give me water, saying that to calm me down. And when I opened my eyes, I'm behind the table. Amen. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, and my hand was still like this. I only remember myself standing before the girl and laying my hand upon yeah. her. But when I opened my eyes, I was behind the table standing. Not the same position I was standing. The tables I was here, and when I was preaching, I was standing inside. But I was behind the table this side. But my hand was still like this. And here's what happened. That when, when I prayed in tongues there, the Holy Spirit even interpreted the tongues. Mm. Even interpreted the tongues. That's where, again, I experienced the interpretation of tongues. And that's when they began to be suppressed. What is happening? And so another thing, in that same place, other three people began to spray in tongues. So that's 
the chain of tongues for me. Yes, sir. You, you actually mentioned interpretation of the times, right? Yes, sir. And there's this pastor I was listening to actually last night, and he was saying within a church, even though there are people who speak in tongues, there, there should be the interpreters of the tongues. Mm. So how does one become an interpreter of the tongues? Let's, let's talk about interpretation of the tongues. Right? I thank you for that question, because Paul in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he says, let the one who speaks in tongues pray for the interpretation that God may give him the interpretation of tongues. So it's not something that you can learn. Just like I thought before, when I first, you know, I went to my pastor before I prayed in tongues. I used to think that maybe they have <laughs> their own book where they study tongues. <laughs> That's what I thought. So even <laughs> maybe a secret book that they had, that, because even with the gift or with the interpretation of tongues, you cannot go to a school for interpretation of tongues. I cannot teach you how to interpret tongues. Yeah. But it's something that comes divinely by the Holy Spirit, just like prophecy. You cannot uh, rehearse prophecy. Yeah. You cannot rehearse it. You cannot. It comes divinely. It comes as an inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So with the same thing, even the interpretation of tongues, it comes with the Holy Spirit. And what I've seen most of the time, Sam, I've seen the Holy Spirit interpret tongues. But most of the time, because people do not trust the Holy Spirit, you know, just like sometimes when a person begins to speak in tongues, or some of the people when they speak in tongues, the Holy Spirit completely takes over them to such an extent that it's like they're not aware of what is happening to them. So just like, I'm sorry to use this, just like when a person is demon-possessed, a demon can take over the person and manifest to the person. And yet the person, the person is no longer in control of their bodies and what they are doing. So the same thing, the Holy Spirit is able to take over the Holy Spirit and be in control of what the person says, what the person does. So most of the times that, let's say in a church, say, it happens. Let's say uh, somebody, the Holy Spirit takes over somebody and they begin to pray in tongues. They begin to pray in tongues. I'm just making an example. It's not an interpretation. Yeah, uh, uh. Let's say somebody just praying tongues by the Holy Spirit. And instantly they keep quiet. And then somebody again, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit takes over somebody. And they speak, I am God. I am God. Fear me. Fear me. Walk holy before me. Instantly they keep quiet. They are not aware of what is happening. Mm -hmm. And if God still God wants to speak, he continues the other one again with tongues. Speaking tongues. Then this one again. But sometimes it happens that there's no one in the church. That the Holy Spirit, the same person who's speaking a tongue. The Holy Spirit again, after that person has spoken in tongues. The Holy Spirit, it interprets what he just said in tongues to the same person. So it's possible. We have to pray for it. And in actual fact, say it also, my, one of my prayers, that it's time that we see that each and every single gift of the Holy Spirit be manifested. Because each and every gift is equally important and was given to us for a reason. So it's possible for us to experience it. But remember, we have to ask God, believing that it's possible with faith. Just that some of the people believe that it's no longer a thing of our days. But it's still relevant even in our days because the holy spirit is still relevant so the gift it's possible to receive it we just have to ask yeah. as paul said that we must pray that the holy spirit gives us the interpretation or even the gift of interpretation of tongues so family we've come to the end of this episode if you truly enjoyed this episode please leave a comment click that like button the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you will be informed when we drop our content.